Welcome back to Windows Wednesdays, and we're going to talk about some of the latest weird recall shenanigans going on inside of Windows, because it seems to be getting deeper, and I'm wondering if I might have uh, thought about what might be going on here, just no noticing some of the things going on and some of the things people are saying and stuff like that. So I want to go ahead and chat about this today. Thanks for checking out this video by Switch to Linux, where we talk about Linux and open source software and privacy and why you might want to consider switching over to Linux. Part of that is talking about what is going on in the world of Windows. Of course, when they did all their weird stuff, that's when I said, nope, I noped out and I said, let's see what I can do on Linux. And lo and behold, I can do far more things on Linux than I could ever do on my Windows platform. I'm happy that they did this nonsense. Anyway, if you like this type of content, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so leave us a like and a comment down below to help in the algorithm. But with that, let's go ahead and chat about the latest of the recall shenanigans. So it starts with this article from The Verge discussing that Windows recall is delayed again. Wait, I thought Windows recall was mandatory and already installed on systems. What's going on? So, in the article from The Verge, uh, of course, Recall was supposed to come out in June, and then they released these Copilot Plus PCs, and everybody was going to be so excited that their computer was screenshotting everything they had and databasing everything, so, you know, some... some uh, person could steal your computer and gain access or somebody else could just initially just log into your computer and take all your stuff. <laughs> it was that insecure. And uh, when they pushed us out, and it first landed on some preview builds and people were able to get it to work on non copilot plus PCs. We found how horrible and insecure this platform was. Now they responded by pulling it out and doing a number of things, which were a lot better for security, namely attaching it to the uh, windows. Hello authentication, requiring you to verify yourself with the biometric system. Well, that's not something I would ever do. It is way better to do that than what they were doing of having the database available as um, just uh, a text file, uh, a text database. So they did improve the security of it. They also made it opt in instead of opt out. And there were a few other things that they were tweaking on the system as well. However, when Windows 24 H2 rolled out, Chris Titus noticed that Recall ended up being installed on every computer, not necessarily as an application that people could find. And people went in and looked for Recall, and you couldn't find it in your applications list, you couldn't find it in your settings menus, but if you ran the command prompts, you could find Recall. So Chris is like, well, that shouldn't be there, let's remove that out, and it kills the file explorer. Because the file explorer has recall as a requirement, as a dependency, as it were. He released another update as well, talking about uh, the feature. Um, this you can see when you run the the searching for feature names. The feature is recall. The display name is recall. It's called the recall application. Uh, so status enabled. So this was, as he said, installed and enabled. Now I think part of what we're seeing here is a branding issue. I said this before, Microsoft has such a bad branding issue. They have an application called Outlook and they have a service called Outlook. Well, that's stupid. They have Word as a desktop application and Word as a cloud application. And they're two different things. Remember back in the Windows 8 debacle, they had the Windows and the Windows RT and nobody really knew what the difference were between these were at the time. There were a lot of issues, and they do this over and over and over again. Microsoft has a major branding issue. I think what might be happening is there is a sub-level service that enables recall to function. It needs to be there for recall to be enabled, and they enable that sub-level service. Now, there are sub-processes and things like that. It doesn't appear to be a sub-process. It says it's an application in the system. But apparently there's probably a GUI layer application and a base layer application. It looks like they installed and enabled the base layer application on every systems, but the other uh, GUI layer application needs to be there for the system to actually work. That might be what's going on here. Because while 
This video from Chris Titus is now a month old, right? This is a month old video. Windows 11 recall is mandatory, he writes. He goes through the processes, all of the steps. Now, there was also some discussion. Some people said it wasn't there. Turned out most of the EU computers, it was not there on the update. Most of the non-EU computers, it was there on the update. Some people suggested it was only on the Pro and not on the home versions. So there was, it wasn't like installed absolutely on everybody's system, but it was installed on a number of systems. However, with this article, which I had to double check, is this a recent article? It is just a week old. Microsoft delayed recall again. I thought they crammed recall in. That's what Chris Titus reports. People were showing it. Lots of people said in the comments, recalls on my system, but I can't find it anywhere in the GUI. I can't find it in the applications list. I can't find it in the settings. I can't find it anywhere. But now Microsoft just delayed recall again. I thought it was installed. Now it's not installed. I don't know what's going on, right? And that's really what, uh, what we're looking at here. Microsoft says it needs more time to make sure the AI feature is a secure and trusted experience. Okay, you can have all eternity. It is not going to be a trusted experience. You might get it secure. It's probably not going to be a trusted experience. Okay, this should be an application like Apple does. There is a version that's for Apple. It is not even installed on the system. You have to manually install it, and in Apple's case, pay a monthly subscription service to use this. If you want to use this feature, it should be available to you. It should not be installed sitting on a computer waiting for you to toggle a button in software because Microsoft might just accidentally toggle the button in software one day. They're forcing everybody onto encryption. That's required for recall. They're forcing everybody into Windows Hello authentication with your biometrics and facial scans and all sorts of other stuff. Yeah, that doesn't work, you know. Um, so there you have it. Now they are talking about um, delaying it some more. They can make it secure. They are not going to make it trusted. <laughs> Okay. Microsoft is once again delaying the rollout of the controversial recall program for Copilot Plus PCs. Now, remember, recall as this process Chris Titus is talking about installed on every system, not Copilot Plus PCs, every system that he looked at. Again, EU versus US and home versus professional might be some discrepancies there. But the software John had planned to start testing recall, which creates screenshots of mostly everything you see and do on a Copilot Plus PC with uh, insiders in October. Of course, it is now November and it's not there. So they said we are committed to delivering a secure and trusted experience with recall to ensure we deliver on these important updates. We are taking additional time to refine the experience before previewing it with Windows insiders. Uh, this is Brandon LeBlanc, senior product manager of Windows, in a statement to Verge. Uh, originally... I think did they I think they completely messed up their quotes. Verge Verge your editor messed up. Anyway, uh, originally planned for October, Recall will now be available for preview with Windows Insider on Copilot Plus PCs by December. So those of you on the Windows Insider on a Copilot Plus PC, you should in theory be able to see it sometime this month. Microsoft was forced to originally hold back after the security concerns. We had talked about those at the start of this, and I have several other videos on it. Uh, Microsoft's multiple delays related to overhauling recall security. Again, we talked about that. Yes, they did greatly improve the security of the feature. That is something they did. And uh, good. If you're going to use it, it should be secure. My big problem is it's installed and just waiting for a simple software toggle switch to turn on. Because, you know, Microsoft, look at how a lot of companies work right now. If you go and delete something on Facebook, it's not actually deleted. It's just hidden from you and from other people. Uh, not from them. And if somebody comes in and uh, like, here is a warrant on this guy, they get access to all your deleted messages too. They're not deleted. I makes me wonder if Microsoft's not going to do the same thing. We're taking all this stuff. You just can't see it. <laughs> Why is this eight gigabytes of data on my uh, Windows update just taken up and I can't delete it? I don't know. What, what are you storing in that eight gigabytes of undeletable data? Hmm. Interesting. Uh, Recall uses a local AI built into Windows 11 uh, to screenshot everything you do on a computer and then give you the ability to search and retrieve things that you've seen. Um, let's see. So they, again, micro, earlier this week, Microsoft again clarified Recall will not be mandatory. It, see, that's incorrect. It is mandatory because they are installing it and you can't uninstall it. It is opt-in. So it's installed. It is mandatory. It's just not enabled. 
by default. So they uh, that is not correct. That they it, it is mandatory because it is installed. Now it will be opt in. And they, they do say, actually, okay, I do have to issue a correction on that statement. I do remember that video now. They do say that you can uninstall it. You can fully remove it. Okay, that, that is correct. I did remember doing that video as well. So they are installing it by default, but not enabling it. But you should, in theory, be able to uninstall it. Of course, it might come back like Candy Crush, back from the dead on every single Windows uh, Tuesday update. So... <laughs> Who knows? Uh, clarification came after various YouTube videos claimed recall was being installed on Windows 11 version 24H2. This was a reference to Chris Titus and the, the rest of us who covered this as well. Chris Titus being the first person. And the problem that Microsoft has here, of course, remember, this is a PR person trying to clarify things. The problem is Chris Titus showed objectively and various other people confirmed objectively Recall is being installed as some level, some command level or sub level system. It is installed and it is a dependency of the new file explorer. So, are there two recall applications? One that you don't see lying around in the ether of Microsoft, collecting data, spying for the NSA, while the GUI application is the one that's useful for you? Are there two of them? Because this is clearly here. Uh, Windows release an update where there's no recall and you have the latest and greatest file explorer for Windows without having it. That's actually what he was talking about in his re, uh, his updated video, which was one week later. He's talking about you had to roll back to an older version of file explorer lacking many of the modern features over the last year. So in this video, he's talking about looking for alternatives to the file explorer. So they say here that... The clarification came after various YouTube videos claimed recall was being installed on any PC on Windows 11. Again, is this a difference between a recall application lying around in the subsystem that you can't see versus the GUI version? Is this a branding problem? Is there a recall service and a recall application? Is there a sublevel? Kind of like in Linux, the best I can say is, is almost every Linux system has FFmpeg installed. Almost nobody knows how to use it on a terminal. It's an amazing application to learn how to use. But you get applications like Audacity and um, uh, VLC and numerous other applications all use that sublevel system to do all the GUI uh, things in the GUI and spit out beautiful, amazing things for you. Like, wow, this program's amazing. No, this program's just a GUI for the really amazing program called FFmpeg, which is a terminal based application. So, is Chris Titus showing us a terminal-based application called Recall, which is required for the new version of the File Explorer, and if you remove Recall, it removes the new version of the File Explorer, and this application is different from the GUI Recall we're going to see, or is this something else altogether? I don't know, because Microsoft has a branding problem, and Microsoft will never be a trusted platform. And I don't know. So they end the article here in The Verge saying the good old fashioned fear, uncertainty and doubt has spread far and wide simply because some references to recall appearing in 24H2. Microsoft's blunt removal of recall over the summer appears to have led to some bugs in the feature appears uh, and is controlled in Windows 11. This is Microsoft absolutely being a bunch of bold faced liars. There is some application going on in the background. And some other application is going to be doing something with that in the foreground. And they're not being honest about that. And I kind of want some clarifications. Now, I'm not nearly as good at all of the Windows subsystems as a Chris Titus is, or some of you guys might be. I was a basic Windows user that was happy build, building my websites on a Windows platform until Windows pushed me way too far and I created this channel called Switch to Linux, where I spent five years converting every aspect of my life to Linux. And I would encourage you to start considering doing the same thing because I can't trust Microsoft right now. They want to say we're going to work on getting this to be a trusted platform. You can have all eternity. I am never going to trust you, Microsoft. I don't trust you. You want to collect data and say it's you, we're focused on your privacy. If you're really focused on my privacy, have a simple option for me in Windows 10 to say never send any data at all to Microsoft. But what about bugs? I don't care. I will spend my time on forums figuring out my bugs. If I think you need to know about it, I will issue you a bug report. 
But don't sit here and say, we care about your privacy. Send me all of this data that you can't turn off now. I, I need to see this. I need to see the IP. I need to see your computer specs. I need to see all this kind of stuff about you. It all is going to come up to our server. You, No, no, no. You can't turn it off. We care about your privacy. No, you don't. Just like the same thing over here. The Verge is trying to cover for Microsoft by saying, there's these YouTubers, this Chris guy is spreading fear, uncertainty, and doubt because we had to remove recall and this application showed up in the middle. Dude, it showed up after an update. When you removed it, it killed the file explorer. It's named by the thing that we are all concerned about. The problem is that Microsoft probably has a branding issue and there's a sub-level layer application and there's a major layer application. If this sub-layer application was called something else, it didn't matter what you called it, it wouldn't matter and nobody would care. But it was called Recall, the same name of the application that everybody does not want on their system. That's my thought. I would encourage you to start looking at switching to Linux. I have been telling people for a long time, Slowly switch to Linux, install an application, see what you can do. Right now, guys, that time is drawing near. If you have not already started exploring it, you might have to do a quick cold turkey switch soon. It is getting crazy out there, folks. I would still encourage you, try out Linux now while you can. I'm not saying you got to wipe out your Windows system. Get yourself a USB drive. Get Linux installed on that. Play around with that. Figure out what you can do. Ask yourself those questions and figure things out. That is what I will implore you to do. So if you like this type of content, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Leave us a like and a comment down below. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.